Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek. I'm going to call it Deep Thoughts Thing Coats. There's going to be zero coats and a, a little bit of deep thoughts is, I think, what we're going to have here. Today, I want to put out a video talking about preparing for a tournament because it's something that I've been thinking about now that we're kind of moving into the the, the post-pandemic world where things are starting to get into uh, more of a the usual swing. Bigger events are opening up. Bigger events are happening. People are able to go to do these things. And we're able to gather in bigger groups and gather in any groups at all in a safe manner that's allowing us to be able to get back to what we had been doing. So preparing for tournaments has now become a bigger thing than it had been for the last year and a half or so when there was nothing happening. For me personally, this has been a bit of a, a reawakening to what it was because it previously, right before everything kind of hit, I was going to tournaments very often. I was going to a big tournament probably once every two months and I was going to a, a smaller tournament certainly every month, if not a couple in a month. Uh, I was doing a lot of gaming. I was playing a lot and I was getting, you know, a lot of exercise with the, the armies that I was playing. And then during the pandemic, my army of choice, the Dark Angels, I happened to get one of the best books that we've ever had in my time as playing with the Dark Angel, and I wasn't able to play him in a competitive situation, and it became frustrating because we were finally good. We were finally had something that we could use, that we could go out there and compete with the big boys and, and, and show what we could do, and I wasn't able to do it. So now that I'm able to, I'm very excited to get back into it and try to come up with these 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 tough-nosed lists to, to run them into other people's tough-nosed lists and show what we can do. Because of that, I've been going to a lot of tournaments. As some of you have seen, I went to the, uh, the, the, the Games Workshop tournament down in Orlando, their first US Open Series uh, tournament. I've been to a bunch of smaller RTTs at places around. I went, I've been up to Atlanta. I've been over to Charleston. I've done a lot of gaming. I've been trying to get into more and more uh, tournaments that I've been doing. Part of it is to get back into uh, the, the feeling of what it's like to go to these tournaments, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. I love going to these tournaments, getting to meet other, up with other nerds, spending a weekend or just even just a day, just playing a whole bunch of games of the game that we love to play and being able to exercise that and just have a ton of fun uh, interacting with each other and being able to enjoy each other's company while playing the game that we love to play. But for me personally now, I'm also starting to get to the point where I'm going to be going to bigger tournaments. So for one of them, in at the end of uh, of January, I'm going to be going to LVO again. I go to there. I've been going there for the last couple of years every year, except for the last one that was canceled. And also in November, as the, the cat is out of the bag, I have been invited by the gentleman over at SM, SN Battle Reports to come and compete at No Retreat Legends in Gibraltar, uh, which is something I'm super stoked about. This is one of the first times that I've, uh, I mean, it's certainly the first time I've been to Europe to play Warhammer. Uh, it'll be the first time I've been to Europe in many, many, many years. I have family in England um, and that I used to travel to a lot. But now uh, this is going to be the first time I've gone there for Warhammer, which is exciting. I've never been to Gibraltar. I've heard beautiful, wonderful things about it. I've heard beautiful, wonderful things about the No Retreat series that they put on. I've heard no, nothing but great things about the SN Battle Report guys and a lot of the other guys who have been invited to this including the guys at uh, Tabletop Tactics, Tabletop Titans, uh, Vanguard Tactics, uh, tons of guys that are going to be there, Hellstorm Gaming, T tons and tons of guys uh, that you are familiar with from the various outlets that they put their, their, their uh, entertainment pr uh, products out on, and they will be there competing. At, uh, I think in, in, a, in a tournament that's going to be both competitive and a ton of fun. Because the beauty of this is that everybody who is going to be there has been playing a lot of games. And they know that it's not about necessarily just winning and losing. It's about having a good time. So that when we all of, all of us except for one will eventually lose a game, we will all have had a good time. Even if we have that loss that came and even if it was close. And we're all there to, to have a good time, show off what we've done, interact with each other, talk and, and, commun you know, and have... A, a, a great series of communications, I'm sure, about what it's like to, to be playing this game, especially out in the internet, for all of you to watch and enjoy. And it's also a time for us to flex with each other, you know? Show what we can do, you know? There's a lot of guys out there, especially, you know, Lawrence from Tabletop Tactics, um, the guys from Vanguard Tactics. A lot of these guys are, like, top competitive players. And I'm obviously, I'm not known for being a top competitive player because, 
quite frankly, I'm probably not a top competitive player, but I feel like I could still try to flex on them, show what, what I'm doing. You know, I'm not just the guy who woos and has his face on funny pictures, although I do have plenty of that. I'm also the kind of guy who, who can take an army, build a list, and do some awesome, fun things with it. But with that in mind, a lot of what I'm going through right now trying to prepare for this is the same kind of thing that you can prepare for your RTT or your GT or whatever it is that you're going to, Super Major, whatever it might be, whatever tournament you're going to, this will give us, th th what I'm going through right now is the same kind of thing that you can go through. So there's a couple steps that it takes to get ready for a tournament. The first one is to find a tournament that you want to go to, whether it's at your local gaming store, whether it's at a bigger, more regional tournament, whether it's you're going to like the big GW GT or you're going to like a super major like LVO with like hundreds, if not a thousand players playing in the tournament, whatever it is, find the tournament that you want to play in and make sure that you're ready to go to it. So you take the time off of work, you make sure you okay it with the family and you say, this is when I'm going. You book everything for that you need for travel or whatever it is. It's locked in. That's where you're going. You've got the ticket bought. You're going to be there. Now you have a goal. That's important. Having that goal is important because it allows you to really focus on the next steps that it's going to take to get ready for that tournament. Because once you have a goal in mind, everything else kind of develops what it's worth. Like I said, when the Dark Angels Codex came out in the middle of lockdown, in the middle of the pandemic, and there were no tournaments going on, I couldn't wrap my brain around a competitive list because there was nothing to build for. There was no tournaments that I was getting ready for. There was there was no games that I was even going for. And I would look at the list and I'd be like uh, at the at the book and I'd be like, "Wow, there's a lot of really fun things I could do with this, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I've got no goal that I'm working towards." So now that we have a tournament in mind, for me, it is No Retreat Legends. For you, it's the local RTT or it's LVO, whatever it is. You have your tournament in mind. That's the first step. And it's an important step. So now you have that. You now know what you're working towards. And everything else that we're going to do is going to help you build towards that. So the next thing you need to do is figure out the army that you want to play. Do you only have one army? Then that question becomes super easy to figure out. You're just going to take the one army you're going to take. And that's fine. Whatever it is, whatever you want to do. Do you want to bring the the the, the hardest, most cutting edge metal list? Are you going for the Admech? Are you going for the Drukari? Are you going with the army that you've just had for decades that you've just built up that happens to be very good? Maybe you started Admech when they first came out and you're just now reaping the rewards like I am with Dark Angels, you know? I don't have, you know, blue blue armored Dark Angels that I'm going with. I might have green bikers, but that's because I choose to do that, not because I decided to be Dark Angels afterwards. I've, I've, I've been working with the Dark Angels. I've wanted to play the Dark Angels and now I have a book that's going to do well with it. So I know what army I really want to play with because I've got these Dark Angels. I've got this army that I'm ready to just really explore and really take advantage of. So that's important. Find out what it is. Do you have an army that's fully painted? Then go with that one. You know, you've got all the pieces ready to go there. That's going to be 10 points for every one of your games that is fully painted. Do you want, is this going to be your excuse to start a new army? Have you been wanting to, and now you want a reason to start a new army? then gearing up for a tournament is a perfect excuse to start a new army because it gives you the opportunity to build, to buy the pieces for a specific list that you are then going to take with you. I'm not going to lie. If you already have an established army beforehand, it, it will help with the later steps, but it's a perfectly valid excuse to start a new army is a tournament that you want to go to. So maybe you decide you're going to start a new army. You're going to buy the models you're going to start painting them and get them ready for that tournament so that come that event, you're going to be ready to go and you're going to have a fully painted 2,000 point army ready and raring to go that you can then take to your, you know, your weekly game nights or your monthly game nights or whatever it might be to your YouTube channel. <laughs> whatever it might be, you will have now a new army that that's what your goal was with this new army that you've decided to, to start up. So perfect. We've now established which army, which tournament we're going to go to. We now have the army that we're going to bring, whether it's new, whether it's old, whatever it is, we've decided on what we're going to do. The next step is going to be a bit more complicated because now you have to build that list. And I guess maybe if you're going to start a new army, this will take place before you buy your models for the new army, but you have to come up with a concept for your list. And this is important because a lot of times it becomes easy to get caught up in the hype about specific models and specific units 
that you think are just they're all over the place that people talk about is it like the, is it the Drukari that you just think Raiders fan because everyone's talking about how good Raiders are so maybe it's just I'm going to take all the Raiders or is it Admech it's like I just need 4,000 little infantrymen for my Admech army because those are the ones to be you know or is it just Dark Angels it's like I'm only going to take Terminators because Terminators are really good they are really good but it becomes very easy to get caught up in the hype about specific units. You know, Space Marines is like, well, obviously you need eradicators. Maybe, maybe you do. And that's the thing is you have to understand all of the different units that are in your book and understand what they're doing. And from there, you can develop a strategy, develop a cohesive way forward that you want to take to build this list. Because a lot of the games are lost at the list building stage. Because you don't have a strong concept behind your list when you make it. You make it on a whim. You make it a little bit, you know, just like piling in a whole bunch of units that you think are good just in and of themselves without thinking about how they interact with each other, how they work with each other, and how to move forward with that list. So honestly, the first step in making a list for me that I've learned, this is something that I've, I've come to learn, and honestly, it's been with the help of a bunch of friends, that I've come to learn is the first step in making a good list is have a good concept of what you want your secondaries to be. Because that's the one aspect of any game in a tournament that you're going to have that you're going to have full control over is choosing your secondaries. Primaries are pretty standard, but they can vary. So maybe some games you're going to have to hold two and hold three. Some games you're holding one and holding two. Some games you can leave the objective and still control it. Other games you can't. You might have different setup of deployment zones. You might have different setups of the objectives on the table in every single one of the games in your tournament. But the one thing you can control is, is the secondaries that you choose. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes the secondaries are going to be dependent upon the mission you're playing, your opponent that you're playing. But a good rule of thumb when going into these situations is to have one, if not two, secondaries that you are always going to choose. So for me, I've been building a Dark Angels list. And I know that we have a secondary for the Dark Angels called Stubborn Defiance. And essentially what it is, is you score points based upon how many command phases an obsec unit has held a, a single objective that you chose at the beginning of the game. So you chose it for turn one, you choose that objective. These are what I'm, this is what I'm going to hold. This is the objective that's going to be my Stubborn Defiance objective. And you score points every command phase based upon how many turns that the that an obsec unit has held. So now I know that most, most, of the, most of the deployments have an objective in your deployment zone that you can start a unit on and hold it there for the entirety of the game. So you can sit that unit on that objective. And if they can hold it for the whole game, you have 15 points. So now I know I'm going into every game with 15 points in my back pocket. That's up to my opponent to try to steal from me. Because with doing nothing else, I now know that I've got that. So I go into it and I go, okay, sounds great. Stubborn Defiance. Now I have to try to figure out how do I build a list that's going to best allow me to accomplish that secondary so that each tournament, that each game that I go into at this tournament, I'm going to get those 15 points. Because it doesn't help that I go into it thinking I'm going to take that and then not have a game plan for how to hold it. So, for Dark Angels in particular, I know that if I have an all Deathwing, an all Inner Circle detachment, a Vanguard detachment, that I can then make my Terminator squads obsec. I also know my Terminators are very difficult to move because you can't move. You can, they've got transhuman, uh, essentially transhuman on them. I can have a Ravenwing Apothecary that can heal them up and bring guys back as they get lost. It becomes very hard to focus down a unit, especially if it's all the way back in my deployment zone, not really getting in your face, not really making a nuisance of itself other than just getting me points. You know? So I now, if I can make a list now that takes advantage of that, I can sit that unit back there they can hold it against, uh, you know, against the enemy that's going to be able to come at them. And I'm in a pretty strong spot to start out with 15 points right off the bat and get that in every single game. So, for instance, when I went to the Orlando GT, all the games that I won, I scored a lot of points because I had that in mind and I knew what I was going to do. The games that I lost were the ones where my opponents were able to either bait me into different things that, I, uh, that made me compromise that or were able to make maneuvers to get around it, but 
I knew going into it that that's what I was going to, to, to aim for. And I made a list that was very good at accomplishing it. And it did very well. Now I have that secondary. I also know that I can take, um, that I can also take, uh, oath of moment. Very often there is an objective in the center of the board. And I know that if I'm holding that objective, if I've got a unit with wholly within six inches of the center there, I'm going to be getting two, two points per turn. You're looking at an easy eight to 10 points from that. Then if I don't fall back, which Dark Angels can't really because of the, the inner circle rule that I'm taking advantage of, they're not allowed to fall back out of combat. If they don't fail morale tests, which Marines are very good at not doing because I've got a lot of min squad units that aren't really getting to the point where they're going to be forced to take the, the, the rule, to take the test. Or I have a lot of units that are inner circle and therefore fearless and not going to be taking the test. So I know that I'm getting a lot of point that I can get a lot of points from that for most of the most of the missions that have an objective in the center, especially because you want to hold that anyway. So now I have a list that I start thinking about and I go, okay, well, I'm going to need a Terminator unit in the back there. I'm probably going to want to have a Ravenwing Apothecary to heal them or bring them back that it can just move around a lot, be very fast. So as Dark Angels, we have uh, access to this apothecary on a bike that I can make a chief apothecary, give him selfless healer, uh, warlord trait. And suddenly now I've got the core of getting me points. So now I also want to have a unit that can sit in the middle. So now maybe I take a Deathwing Night Squad because they're also very brutal. They've got a bunch of storm shields. They've got the same thing. Can't wound them on fours. They got three wounds a piece. They also benefit from the, the Ravenwing Apothecary being able to heal them and bring guys back. So now I have these two units that are going to be sitting in the middle back on my home objective. And if they can just do that, I've got basically 30 points right off the bat. That's 30 points without even worrying about secondaries. And if it's hold one, hold two, then right there, I've got another 40 points without having to do anything else. I've got three units in my list that I now have hold one, hold two, sit in the middle there, don't fall back, sit on the back objective, just hold that objective and be able to heal and return units back and forth with the apothecary. Three units now on my list, and I'm thinking about sitting on 30 points that's up to my opponent to try to take back from me. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. If you go into every game knowing that you can that you can like bank on 30 points and also 40 points in primaries, you're looking at 70 points now without having to interact with your opponent at all. That's a perfect setup. So now you sit now you sit back and you go, okay, that's the core of the list that I need. Now I need to figure out what else I want to happen here. So I look at the army, I look at my codex, I look at my supplement and I go, which units do we have access to that are very strong that can help me out here? So I look at Talonmasters immediately because Talonmasters put out a ton of shots. They're really great at handling a bunch of min squad units because they can just rip through them. They're also good at handling horde because they've got so many shots that they're pumping out there, hitting on twos. They're strength five and six, AP minus one or AP minus two if it's the Devastator Doctrine. They're very strong. They're very strong units. They're, they're, they're characters, so they can't be targeted. They also benefit from the bodyguard rule that now my Deathwing Command Squad can give them. The Deathwing Command Squad are Terminators, so they're also Inner Circle. They're benefiting from that. I can put a guy with a Storm Shield in there, so now I'm not getting wounded on fours. Sitting on cover with this bodyguard unit, and he's got a one-up save. He's got No, he's got like a, what is it, a zero-up save if he's on terrain with a Storm Shield there. And he's there can't be wounded on anything less than four up. They are three wounds a piece and they can also be healed by my apothecary. They can be brought back by my apothecary. So they're suddenly now we're seeing the synergy that's going on. So I can pop those two guys are very easy to hide. You can put them behind some line of sight blocking, make sure the other side of some obscuring terrain and they can't be targeted. So now I can get my, my, Talonmasters in a position where they can just shoot at the enemy without being able to be shot back. And they're very fast. So if the opponent, if my opponent then makes a move to try to take them out, they pop out. They just move away. So that is perfect defense there. I've got very fast mobility with those Talonmasters. I've got survivability if you throw in a command squad there to keep them from being shot at. And they're putting out a ton of DACA, putting out a ton of shots that are going to be able to keep back the horde. And if the horde's being kept back, they can't get they can't go and overwhelm me in the center. They can't go and overwhelm me back on my home objective, and I'm better able to to get my points there. So now I start to put together a list and I'm like, "All right, well they're really good. And if one's really good, two's even better. And if two's better, then perhaps three." 
and you think about it, it's like you try to pair it off, you think about the points, and you start to put it together. You put these pieces together and you start to come together with a cohesive idea of how your list is going to work. I also can take Ravenwing. You know, so now I'm talking about these the 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 Talonmaster, and he's inner circle, so he can work with my he can work with my uh, my Deathwing um, detachment. He can work with my inner circle detachment, but he's also got this Ravenwing, and our Ravenwing have the same thing as the Deathwing, where if you're in an entire Ravenwing Outrider detachment, suddenly my bikers now are obsec. So for 90 points, I can have a three man bike squad with chain swords that becomes obsec. We can also double move with one of our tactics. So we can advance, we can move uh, 14 inches, auto advance six inches, and then move an additional 12 inches. So suddenly now I can just jump onto an objective that is 32 inches away with obsec and take it away from a unit that seemed that it was holding it back there. So all of a sudden in my opponent's back line, if he's got uh, plague burst crawlers that's just sitting back there on an objective, I zoom that unit up there, it's obsec. It doesn't matter if I'm only three models, I've got obsec. I outtake you. I'm on this. It sounds great. Thank you very much. That's mine now. You know, so all of a sudden I've got this where it's like, okay, so now I've got some units that can be very good at denying my opponent points because great. If I score a ton of points, if my opponent scores a ton of points. He, they're, they're still going to win because they might be able to score more than me. So now that I know I can make my base, my core points that I can get back, probably about 70 points that I've got core there that I can go into every game pretty secure and being able to achieve. I now go, I need to deny my opponent from getting tw- uh, th- uh, 70 points. So I want fast obsec units that can shoot out there, jump on objectives, keep him from getting his primary, keep him from getting secondaries, keeping him out of uh, the screening out really well in the back zone so they can't just drop down. Because one of the things that my, that kind of plan is hurt by is other obsec units being able to jump onto my objective and take it away from my terminators and deny me a lot of points. Because that's how I lost to Sisters. I lost, uh, the, one of the games I lost to Sisters, they were able to put Obsec onto Seraphim with the our martyred lady. And he just would jump onto the objective, outnumber me, and keep me from being able to score points. Which is a perfect plan. That's how you do it. That's how you beat me. I also lose out to Necrons if they, you know, use um, Veil of Darkness and suddenly drop a 20-man, or a, like a 10 or 20-man warrior squad next to me. And if they make that charge... They're going to outbody me on that t- on the on the uh, with obsec on my home objective, and now I'm losing points. I'm no longer controlling it. I no longer have it. So I need to be able to screen that out. And those bikers are really great at it because they screen it out until all of his guys have dropped down, and then they shoot up the board, jumping on objectives, denying him his points. So now I start to put this together, and I go, okay. So we have that. We have the ability to do this. But now there's always those units in an enemy list that are difficult to handle, that you need that strong punch to be able to take out before they come and hurt you. Deathwing are good at being durable. Honestly, they're the best thing they have is that they're very durable. So that's why I want them to sit in the middle. That's why I want them to sit in the back. That's why I want them to be the bodyguards to keep my character safe because they're going to be durable. You're not going to be able to kill them and that's going to keep my, my game plan going strong. But I'm going to need something to punch in the face. So I look at what I have and I go, okay, I need to stick with Deathwing. I need to stick with Ravenwing because I, they, getting the obsec for those is key to my strategy and how I'm going to be able to do this. And then I go, okay, what do I, what can I do to punch? So I look at it and I go, attack bikes with multi melters. That's great. You shoot them up there. Uh, first turn for Ravenwing, I can advance up. I can shoot even though I advance. I get plus three inches to my range. So there's very little that can hide from it. So I have the squads. They shoot up. They shoot. They usually die turn one or two. Uh, If they manage to survive, they shoot back to the apothecary, get healed, bring a guy back. And now I've got more attack bikes heading out there. It all starts to work in that synergy. And that's how I start to build my list. So now I have my list because I have the things that can punch. I've got the things that can uh, keep my opponent from scoring his objectives. I've got a plan for how to score my objectives. And I have a pathway to victory. And if I have that pathway to victory, I have an effective list. And then it just comes down to being able to know how to play it. So that's what you need to be able to do is make your list with that in mind. Have a game plan in mind. Start with the secondaries. Start with the secondaries. Do you think that you can, if you're custodies, you know, you have very durable units that are very hard to kill. So maybe you start with a list that goes with um, to the last because you know that it's going to be very rare that your opponent's going to be able to wipe out 
your three Telemons in a game, and you're going to be able to score those points. They may be able to w- knock out one if they focus it down, but then you're still scoring 10 points, which is a pretty solid score for um, for for a secondary objective. You know, you look at Rod, Tree Vactarius data, it's a max of 12, and people take that all the time because it's a pretty it's a pretty strong one to take. So if you can almost guarantee yourself 10 points at least every game, let alone probably 15, then that's a good way to start. So maybe you start with that. You go your three Telemons in your custodies list. You now know a secondary that you're going to start with and you move from there. So now we've built a list, right? We've looked at our secondaries that we want to bring that we started with, built a list around those secondaries, thought about a pathway to victory, thought about how we're going to have our game plan. And now we feel confident in this list. It feels strong. You need to play with it. Practice. Start with your friends. And I know maybe maybe you're like, well, my friends are a lot more, you know, more casual gamers. They're, they just like to have fun. And that's great. I love having fun. I mean, look at the, the, the games on my, bat, on my channel. It's like not every single one of those lists that I bring to my battle reports would I bring to like an LVO. Would I bring with to No Retreat Legends with me? It's just not, it's not how it's going to work. I love having fun with fun lists, just like trying different things out, just playing in units that I think look super cool, that I just finished painting that are rad, that I think are fun to play with. That's great. But now you have a goal in mind. You want to do well at this tournament, you know? I'm not necessarily saying that you're thinking you're going to be on top table, but you can try. I mean, after day one in Orlando, I was number one. I never expected to be there, but I knew I was going to try and do my best and do what I could to do well. So now you sit back and you go, all right, well, even if your friends are just casual gamers, talk to them and just be like, hey guys, I plan on going to X tournament and I have a list that I want to build that I want to play with. And I feel like it's strong. I feel like it's good. Do you guys mind if a couple of the, the, our Thursday games are more competitive? You know, maybe you can put together a competitive list of your own, see what you can do to try to beat my list that I have that I'm trying to hone. And the importance is just getting those reps in. It doesn't mean that you have to see the, the cutting edge meta list that you're going to face off against. Maybe none of your friends have Sisters of Battle. Maybe none of your friends have Admech. Maybe none of your friends have Drukari. Maybe they don't have any of those. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you get reps playing your list so that you know now what your secondary, you know now how to gun for your secondaries. You know what to watch out for. So suddenly your friend drops in his um, Def Skulls um, storm, uh, storm boys and out obsects you back on your home objective. And you're like, I did not see that coming. Now I know I need to be aware of that. I now know I need to screen out more. I now know that they're going to be super fast and coming up here. Maybe they become a priority for me to shoot at so that I know they can't come and get me. So now you have a target for your talent masters in my case, or maybe now you have a target for your telemon in this case. It's like, well, I did not expect his outflanking, um, eradicators to just handle my tell them on that bet. Well, now you know. So now you you screen it out more. Now you do some stuff to try to make sure that you can that you can handle those things that you didn't foresee coming when you were making your list, when you were preparing your list. So now when you get to the table at the tournament, you now see those storm boys and you're like, "Oh, that's right. I need to be able to I need to be able to screen them out. They become a target. They become a priority for me. I now know that those sisters can make those seraphim objective secured. So I need to make sure they don't get onto the objectives that I want. I make sure that I'm going to have this, or I now know that those, those, those outflanking eradicators are going to take down my telemont. I need to make sure I'm nowhere near where those guys could come in. You now know these things that came up. You also have the ability to go through your, uh, go through all of your, um, your, your stratagems so that you have an idea of what your army can actually do. You know what you're able to accomplish. You know what you're able to do. So that you're not left there going, oh man, I wish there was something I could do and you're flipping through trying to find it. On the table, you should know what you can do. You should know what your response is going to be. And you can go back to all those games that you played with your friends. And yeah, maybe they didn't bring a cutting edge list, but at least they made you think about it. So you go, oh, that's right. I can bring, I can use transhuman here. It's like, oh wait, I'm going to use that strategy that allows me to be... um, allows me to ignore leadership as long as I'm near that objective that I'm on. These are all the things that, that'll, that'll, that'll be ingrained in your head if you've played a few games with them. And the more games you can play, the better. You know, the, the guys at the top table have probably played their list that they brought to that tournament like 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 times with that same list. And sometimes they only play the first round. They'll play that initial first round. They're like, all right, let's re-rack. Let me, let me see if uh, where I go this. So that when they hit a table, 
they know that when they set up, where they're going to set up, they know what their first turn is going to be. They don't care what you're doing because they know what they're going for. They have their game plan. And that comes from being able to play the list over and over and over again and against a whole bunch of different uh, situations and different plays. Different, play the different missions. Play it in different ways. Try to put yourself in positions that you think you might have to face and see how you can work your way out of that. So once you have those reps down, you now know how to play it. So now you have your tournament that you're going to. It's locked in. You have the army that you're going to play so that you can build and paint it and be ready and, and score as many points as you can from there. You now know the list that you're going to play. You now know the game plan for playing that list. And now you've taken the time to play that list a, mo a couple times so that you have gameplay in your mind on how to react to situations that you're going to face at a tournament. You'll never be able to foresee every single situation. You're never going to be able to foresee failing every single two up save. You're never going to be able to foresee succeeding every six up in vol that you needed. All of these things that you're going to face when you hit the table itself, that you can't foresee it all and you can't prepare for it all. But you can put yourself in a position where you're better able to respond to it. And that becomes key. That becomes super key in how you're going to perform at your best at these tournaments. So now you're prepared. You're ready to go. You've put your army together. You've built and painted them. You've got them in your carry case that you're going to figure out. And that's that's a whole other issue that you could think about, how to get your army to there. You know, if you're flying on a plane, you got to make sure that you're that you're army can fit in the overhead compartment as opposed to being checked into baggage because who knows what they're going to do with them down there. You know, there's other things like you can have like a, a rolly cart. If you're going to be driving, if it's within driving distance, maybe you get a fold up cart that you put in your trunk that you bring with you so that you can move your army from table to table. If not, maybe you get a tray, you know, just a little diner tray or something like that, that you can bring with you so you can move your army. You're not putting them back into a case every time you're moving from army to list uh, from table to table. Um, again, if you're driving to this tournament, they have, um, uh, shock absorbing mats that you can bring that help on the stress of your legs. Cause you're going to be standing for the whole day. And trust me, especially if you're going to multi-day tournament, like a three day tournament, like a Nova open or a LVO, your back and your knees and every, and your feet especially are going to feel it after that time. And anything you do to help it, getting comfortable shoes, bringing that mat if you can, if you're in driving distance, whatever it is. Those are all the things that you can then think about and that you can work on now that you have the crux of what it's going to take to play in that tournament. So you're ready. At that point, you're ready. And you can go to the tournament knowing that you're going to have a ton of fun because you're ready. And you're not going to be stressed out. You're not going to be frustrated with yourself because if you lose you know you lost and you know how it happened. So you either saw that the dice went the wrong way or your opponent's just very good, you know, or it was something that you just didn't foresee happening and it just like popped up, you know? At that point, at that point, you can't be mad. At that point, that is the game. Every single tournament, everybody loses a game except for one guy. One guy wins the tournament after winning every single game and that's it. He's the only person, they're the only person that is going to go something to know. Everyone else has at least one loss in the in, in, in that loss column. So you can go into that tournament knowing that you're prepared to do the best that you can with what you have and ready to respond to it all and have a ton of fun. And that's super important is going into it with the right mindset, which is I'm prepared. So now I can have fun because that's what the weekend's all about. There are very few people that can go to tournaments and, and pay for a living on tournaments. Most people, even the best players, are going to a lot of these tournaments to have fun and enjoy themselves and and do well. And you go there and you have fun and you do well, but you have fun. And that's what's important. So go out there, prepare. And it's super exciting to have something to build towards, having a goal, an aim that you're working towards, especially with an army that you're very excited about doing. Which is why I'd suggest, especially if this is like your first tournament, Definitely take an army that you're excited to play with, that you are that you enjoy building and playing, that you like the gameplay, and not just one that you found on the internet. Because you might be able to do well with the one on the internet, but it's not going to be a fun experience necessarily unless you it just so happens to fall into the realm of what you enjoy doing. So go into it prepared, ready to do your best, 
but most importantly, ready to have fun. So I hope this was helpful. This is kind of what I've been working through. This is what I've been doing for me for tournament prep. And I was just thinking there are probably other people out there that need some help with this because especially the making a list around secondaries, that's a tip that I hadn't even thought about. I hadn't even thought about. I thought you'd never, there's no way you know what your, any of your secondaries are going to be until you get to the table, until you see what the mission is going to be. That is how you lose games because you don't have a game plan. And at that point, you're just kind of like shooting from the hip and that's never going to be sustainable to victory. The best bet is to have a game plan, have an idea of what you're doing. So you go into it. You're like, there's one or two, there's one secondary that I definitely going to take a second secondary that I'm like between two of them that I'm pretty sure depending upon my opponent, depending upon the mission that I'm probably going to choose from. And then a third one that can be a wild card. So it might be, maybe I'll see certain, certain missions might have good secondary, uh, might have good secondaries I can use against certain opponents. It might be good. You know, if I'm going up against a, a knight army, then, you know, Titan Hunter becomes super effective, you know, being able to take down those knights that way. Or if you're going up against like a, a mass amount of, of infantry, so say like an Imperial guard list with like a hundred infantry, you can suddenly take grind or grind them down. And you now can, or not grind them down, or I guess you can take grind them down. You can take a different secondaries and you that depend upon your opponent at that point. But you don't go into it hoping that all three are opponent and mission specific. That's the best bit of advice that I've taken to heart and I've been doing much better since. I've been coming in second at RTTs, coming in undefeated, at, you know, or at like zero losses at other RTTs, coming in first place after day one at the Orlando GT, like... Once you go into it with that kind of mindset, the game changes and it really becomes a lot easier to do and it becomes a lot better to be prepared for. So I hope this was of any of, of, of any help for you. If you guys have any advice for preparing for tournaments, what do you do specifically? How do you prepare? What do you prepare? What do you like to do at, for tournaments? What do you not like about tournaments or what do you not like to do for tournaments? Share it down below. Give us a give us some hints and help each other to become the best tournament players that we can be. So we may not all become top of ITC, but we can at least have a lot of fun and be prepared going into them and give a fighting fighting chance against those top guys. <laughs> so yeah, sound off down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you do prepare and tell me uh, if any of this was helpful for you. If it if any of it kind of made you think and what it was that made you think. So let me know down below. So. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I think this has been good. I have been Phil, the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, stay safe and have fun.